Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Solid State SR71. I'm bringing you a bit of Defiance. This is a new third-person shooter, MMORPG. Brought to you by Tron Worlds. This isn't going to be exactly a review because I don't think I've sunk nearly enough time into it to call it a review. Let me just get you a little bit closer to my face. Alright. But I am going to discuss the game and my impressions and kind of the structure or at least the parts that I know so far, with some gameplay of it behind. So, this game is Defiance. It is, like I said, third-person shooter MMO. It has a TV show tie-in, so ideally what they're aiming for is, obviously, the show's going to affect the game quite heavily, in that things that happen in the show are going to happen in the game. It's a lot easier to work it that way, but the interesting part is, is that a lot of the episodic missions or not a lot of the episodic missions, but the episode missions are going to reflect, are going to be reflected in the TV show. Now, of course, I haven't seen the TV show yet, so I don't know how exactly this is going to tie in. I don't know how long it's going to tie in for. I don't know how much business, how much the two businesses are going to clash and collide. I would imagine that the TV business and the way that ratings work may be affect, may, might affect this whole idea, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see about that. So, um, let's talk about the story. Uh, so far, I haven't seen too much of the story. I've played uh, maybe a handful of missions. They've introduced me to the characters, they've introduced me to the Bay Area, and they've pretty much got me to turn on a tower, and I can't remember what else. <laughs> there was not there was not too much, but there's a nice pre-rendered, not pre-rendered, but uh, real-time cutscenes that play at the beginning of every mission. My thoughts are all over the place, and I'm trying to line them up. It's not working too well. So, yeah, so, this, <laughs> so when you start, you choose one of three, I think it's three different characters. Don't quote me on that. Again, this is not an in-detailed review. I haven't looked into this game too much. I have it. Obviously, but I haven't... I have played it, and that's it. <laughs> so you choose one of three classes of, of types, but unfortunately, the way that it works, none of... Other than the, the fact that it, it affects your starting weapon, nothing else is affected. So when you choose whatever class that you choose, literally, the, the only thing that, uh, that'll change is your primary weapon when you start from what I can tell, because you get different abilities, there's four different abilities that they show you at the beginning, but you don't have to choose the one that, there's none that are assigned to a specific class when you begin. So, I could be like a, like, like the sniper, and I could take, like, the do more damage one, or, or the decoy, or whatever, I could choose whatever of the four abilities that I want. I'm not locked into taking, like, Cloak or something. Um, and so, because of that, I don't know how much replayability this game has as far as, like, once you're done hitting max level on a character, because <clears throat> you can respec in this game. And uh, when you respec, you can actually choose different ability. So, uh, there's no real... Other than the cash penalty, which at this point I don't see where cash really plays into this game. Other than the other than the cash penalty, there's no real reason not not to just respec instead of making a whole new character. Let's move on to the uh, graphics. This game is not a fantastic looking game, but it's definitely not a, a bad looking game by any means. It's, it's it looks really you know whatever. I mean. The thing that you have to realize is that this is an MMORPG, and those games aren't generally known for their graphical finesse, because obviously a lot is running on servers, a lot of it's multiplayer, and you got to be really careful as far as graphics are concerned when you're taking it to a multiplayer front. It's it's definitely very problematic, especially adding like physics and, and what, 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 what have you, like physics and particles and stuff. Like, that has to be careful. You have to be careful with that, and this game has to be even more careful because it's actually, there's a, a 360 and a PS3 release, so on those specifically, they have to be very careful about 
how they throw resources around. And you definitely can tell that there's some frame rate chug, especially when you're doing some of the arc fall missions, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, it's basically you have a lot of people on screen and you're all facing up against one enemy or, or a, gr a, group of en a group of enemies. I guess it would be a group of enemies. Frame rate has a tough time keeping up there. Move on to the sound. I don't know about the sound. I didn't hear much. I've heard some voice actors, voice dialogue, and so far it sounds pretty solid. It doesn't sound spectacular, but it doesn't sound awful either. And other than that, <laughs> the gun sounds are pretty pathetic. That's pretty much it. That's there's. I have not heard too many other sounds other than maybe the driving view. Alright, let's move on to the gameplay. This is where I'm going to be spending most of my time, I think. So as I said, this is a third-person shooter, so it works like a third-person shooter. You have an over-the-shoulder view. With one button, you can zoom in to get a closer look, and then the other one is to fire. Then you have an ability and a grenade, and that is that is it. So in this game, you get grenades. The grenades are tied to uh, a recharge meter, so you never run out of grenades. It's just you fire one and then you have to wait X amount of time for the next one to be available to use. And then ammo is also not a big problem unless you're doing one of the Arcfall missions which I'm actually showing on screen right now, I think. I don't know how I'm going to cut up this footage, but there's some Arcfall footage in there. And uh, basically it's just like you and a big group of, uh, of, of people. If you could think of Guild Wars 2 where they had all those instances where everybody in your instance or in, in the world basically would get a, a ping of where to go and you guys would like cooperate to do like this crazy mission or this crazy boss fight or whatever it's kind of the same here you basically uh whether it's a major arc fall or a minor arc fall doesn't really matter either way it boils down to you killing a whole lot of enemies and then if it's a major one you got to do I believe it's three different areas, and on the third area you have to face up against a big boss. It takes a while, they're about 20 minutes apiece. You get some great experience and some good items, but sometimes don't feel like it's worth my time because they do, they do pop up a lot, they pop up very often, and they're often in the way, and I don't know how I feel about that, I wish they'd tone it down maybe a little bit on the frequency of these events. On top of that, so you have different missions, and the variety is nice. You have side missions, you have main missions, you have episode missions, and then you have time trials and something to do with, I think it's called Hotspot, I want to say. So Hotspot, you are given a task of making a certain amount of score using a certain weapon. So they'll give you a weapon, and they're going to give you a score that they want you to hit, and you just go at it. So they'll dump you with enemies, and it's pretty much that's how that works. But you do run out of ammo, so you got to be careful. I don't think I saw an ammo crate around. I only tried one of them. I wasn't overly excited or overly impressed with them. The time trials are exactly what they sound like. You get your ATV, or I believe you get a car later. No matter what you have, you basically just race through these uh, hoops, and. Uh, you're tasked to finish it within a certain amount of time and you're actually not only given points based on the time that you got and rewards for that but you're also put up against the leaderboard of people that have the fastest time or the highest score as far as hot shot is concerned so it's kind of interesting it, it leads a, a little bit of competition basically the people that are at the top are the people that could get it pretty much the fastest <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. The side quests act a lot like the main missions, only don't get uh, cinematic beforehand. The, the main missions, obviously, cinematic, great. And the episode missions also, you get cinematics, and they tie into the show. And they actually mix up the general, the general flow of the missions. So the side missions and the main missions, basically the way that most of it boils down to is either you capture an area and you have to hold the position, or you have to go and you have to capture certain things or place down beacons. It usually delineates into reaching an area, killing all the enemies, and then 
holding square, which because I'm playing on the PlayStation, holding square when I get there until whatever it is is placed or whatever it is is recovered, and then I move on to the next spot, and then I do the same thing, and then I that's it. That's pretty much it, and that's really the only the only structure I've seen in the t- in the many hours that I've played. I was going to say two hours, but I've played significantly more than two hours. I also can't tell you how the the uh, rank up system works, the leveling system. I know that you get, you know that it's based on ego power rating, and the way that the ego power rating works is you get ten per level up. I don't know what the extra is because I'm at like twenty seven or one twenty seven, I think, or something. I don't know where the seven came from, but there's got to be some scoring in the background for that. I also don't know what it plays into. So I don't know, I guess it, it ties to the weapons and, and the amount of power they have, and it also allows me to buy upgrade points, or up, buy upgrades rather, and a lot of it is gated off, so like, to upgrade my cloak I needed to reach Ego power level 100 in order to level it up so that the cooldown would shorten. So, I mean, I, I kind of see the use of it, but I also don't know exactly 100% how it works. I also don't really know how the loot system works. It's not its not a general loot system. It's not the kind of loot system where they just give you all kinds of stuff. You have, I believe when you start you get 12 slots in your inventory. I think I'm up to 22 or 20 right now. And it's just not, it's not the same. Like you don't go around collecting everything. There's not a lot to collect. And there's not too many weapons to collect either. You're either ending up with salvage, uh, scrip, or ammunition. It's very rare to find weapons and shields and grenades. And it makes it more valuable when you do get them, but it's unfortunate when you get them and then you look at them, and you're like, oh, that's not too useful. So I, I don't know if I really enjoy the loot system either. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of traversing to do, there's some fast travels, but this game, you will have to travel a lot. You will need to move on your ATV, you're going to have to get used to moving on your ATV, because it's pretty much the whole game, you spend it on your ATV. I've also noticed some problems with trying to stay with friends, which is weird. I think that it would stick you in your own like instance, or like keep your instances together, but sometimes it doesn't happen. It's a strange system, um, and I can't really explain it. But at the end of the day, this game, despite its flaws, which there are many, turns out to be just a lot of fun, and I think that the the fact that it doesn't have a subscription fee and the fact that it's on consoles really helps bring in some people that would normally not touch these kind of games, and uh, if you have a few hours to spend... Uh, or if you want a game that you could spend tons of hours on, uh, this is a, a great, great, great option. It's not the best option, but definitely on consoles, you don't have much of an option. So uh, it definitely works, and it works pretty well. And, I mean, the shooting gets monotonous, but for some reason, it grew on me. It grew on me. At first, I couldn't stand it, and, and then I, I, grew to, I grew to like it. And I, I don't know why... But those are my thoughts on Defiance. I hope that they helped you. I know when I was looking to buy this game, I couldn't find anything on the internet about it. So I definitely wanted to try and put something out there so that people could see it. I know that I've seen some since, so I'm glad that now you guys have the information necessary to uh, decide whether or not you want to purchase this game. If you do want to purchase this game and you do have it on the PlayStation, make sure you let me know in the comments. Maybe we can play together. Hopefully they'll fix the instance system. Hopefully. That's all I can say. It's an MMO. It's still first week of launch. I'm not surprised that there are problems. And I expect that they're going to fix them. Thank you guys for watching, as always. And uh, see you guys in the next video.